and Mr. Sasha Radulovic, Minister of Economy. And finally, on that side, we also have Mr. Branko Ružić, Minister responsible for the EU integrations. From the Foreign Investors Council, we have Mr. Frederic Kwan, who is the FIC's president and president of the executive board of Societe Generale Bank. We have um, Gabor Bekefi, FIC's vice president and CEO of Carlsberg Serbia Group. We have Mr. Dimitri Knjeginic, FIC board member and CEO of uh, Lafarge Serbia. And we have uh, Mikalis Orfanodakis, FIC board member and commercial director of PepsiCo Western Balkans. Just a, a brief info at the beginning. Um, all of the FIC members had the opportunity to participate in drafting questions for today's panel. So questions from the audience at this stage are not planned. We will start the panel uh, with you, Mr. Kwan, if you, if you agree. Um, the White Book notes that 47% um, of FIC's recommendations um, from last year have resulted in some or significant progress, while 53% uh, did not achieve progress. How do, you, how do you comment on that score? So this is, um, let's say, a question that you could see. Uh, half, the bottle could be half empty or half, you know, uh, uh, full. Um, to be a little bit more specific, uh, among the uh, uh, recommendations that have been implemented, uh, uh, relatively large part of this one have been implemented uh, partially, and the minority of uh, these recommendations have been implemented fully. So, generally speaking, what do we see? We, we have seen during the last year uh, a government that opened a lot of reforms, uh, a large scope, wide scope of reforms, uh, but uh, from our point of view, there is still uh, a lot to do in order to deepen uh, this, uh, these reforms, to go further on the reforms that have been started. And uh, secondly, we, uh, we think as well that this is a half empty bottle, uh, and this is what we are, we, are, uh, we are saying in the White Book. We still think that there is a need for acceleration of these reforms, and this is why I was saying during my speech that we welcome, of course, this uh, new uh, anti-crisis plan that is uh, coming with additional reforms to the ones that were already implemented. I would like just to come back on one point that I hope was visible in my speech, what we will really focus on, this is the implementation of this reform and the capabilities, the capacity of the administration to really, I mean, implement it efficiently. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, uh, the White Book indeed reports on the initial progress. However, FIC strongly believes that uh, this is the moment to push for further reforms. Uh, now, after the, your cabinet been reshuffled. Uh, is there consensus to further change the overall uh, business framework in Serbia? Pa kao što sam i malo pre rekao u svom izlaganju, sigurno da postoji konsenzus u vladi o neophodnosti ekonomskih reformi. Postoje neke stvari koje čije odlaganje dalje više ne može imati nikakve druge posledice osim izazivanje potpune finansijske, a samim tim i ekonomske i uopšte političke nestabilnosti u našoj državi. Podsjetiću da su ekonomski parametri koje mi imamo veoma loši i da je nivo razvoja naše zemlje danas da je GDP danas svega na nivou 65% bruto društvenog proizvoda iz 89. godine. Da mi imamo danas strukturu 
gotovo isti broj zaposlenih i isti broj penzionera. Da su, da je broj zaposlenih u realnom sektoru, odnosno u sektoru koji stvara neki dohodak je realno, veoma mali. Znači, manje je od milijona. Negde se kreće na tom nivou od 600 do 800 hiljada. U svakom slučaju, nivo javnog duga je narastao na koliko? 59%? Možda i više. Pa ne imajući u vidu koliko su planirali još da se zaduže, mi smo imali jedan sastanak ovde gde smo analizirali koliko još možemo da se, koliko bi još eventualno mogli da se zadužimo. Jer ako pratimo tempo onoga što je već na neki način dogovarano, to je još, čini mi se, 8 milijarde za naredne tri godine. To je bio inicijalni plan i do toga bi verovatno došlo da nismo preduzeli ove mere. Mi to sve moramo da skrešemo i da smanjimo do nivoa koji je prihvatljiv da bi smo javni dug držali do određene granice koje je teško zaustaviti u ovom kratkom roku. Ali ono što je možda najvažnije jeste kako omogućiti da sistem funkcioniše, kako šta raditi sa radnicima, sa preduzećima koje se nalaze u tom takozvanom pravno-ekonomskom stanju koji ja mislim da ne postoji nigde u u svetu, to su ta preduzeća u restrukturiranju. Takođe imali smo privatizaciju gde je jedna trećina sprovedenih privatizacija poništeno. Mi smo imali prvo jedan fetiš sveopšte privatizacije po svaku cenu, pa čak i za jedan evro, a onda smo imali fetiš podržavljenja svega onoga što nije dobro privatizovano, sve smo vratili u državnu svojinu. I zato mi se čini da ovde moramo da preduzmemo isto tako radikalne mere kao što je to bilo i kod političkih stvari. Mora da se stavi tačka i da se zna koji je cilj ekonomske politike u narodnom periodu. Tako da, bez obzira što svaka stranka ima neke svoje, nešto na čemu insistira, što je normalno, Globalno i opšte postoji jedan konsenzus koji se tiče osnovnih ciljeva ekonomske politike u narodnom periodu. Hvala. Perhaps we should immediately include Minister Krstić. How confident are you, Mr. Minister, that the set of measures you proposed would help curb the deficit which could reach, according to some sources, 7 to 8 percent? and also to reduce the public debt, which could exceed 65% of, of GDP. I'm quite confident. The, the measures that, uh, that we proposed um, uh, are essentially designed in such a way that um, they stabilize the public debt um, in 2016 uh, and then basically change the path downward, uh, public debt as a share of GDP in 2017. This is critical for um, for our credibility as, a, as an investment destination, both for equity as well as for, um, uh, for our bond investors. It's also critical for our liquidity on, uh, on international markets, which then leads to everything that the Prime Minister has, uh, has spoken about uh, in, terms of, um, uh, in terms of the socioeconomic stability and uh, then the growth that we, uh, we uh, plan to see in the private sector already starting in, uh, in the latter half of 2014. Um, the measures, if I may, are designed also in such a way that um, they uh, allow us time uh, to uh, conduct the structural reforms that were also mentioned um, uh, in the opening speech uh, uh, by both speakers um, that are long overdue in all the critical segments of the state where the state is involved, which for us is disproportionately much relative to other, um, relative to other countries, starting from the uh, the state-owned enterprises and banks um, to uh, uh, then uh, the involvement or the way we uh, we actually run our education, healthcare, and I would say uh, before all of that, um, even uh, public administration. Thank you, Mr. Kwan. How do you see the, the proposed measures, the printing of the white book, 
actually coincided with the, the, the introduction of government's uh, um, measures. Uh, it, and it looks like that the proposed package indeed addresses some of the FIC's major, major concerns. So obviously, um, the, the white book was not, kept, was not kept as a secret because effectively the government read it in advance. I'm joking, of course, but um, we, are of, we are very happy, as I said in my, in my speech, to see that uh, the government announced... Uh, <laughs> that it's a normal country, it should be. I mean, I didn't catch it. So. Uh, it uh, I understood that it's normal, but... Uh, okay. It should be like that. Yeah, okay. It, it, it was normal. For sure. <laughs> um, but so, effectively, I mean, um, this is so this... Uh, First, uh, this new set of measures I mean, that has been announced by the government uh, uh, is going definitely into the right direction. Um, I would not like to, uh, to come back too much on, uh, on the details of what were the main FIC recommendations and what has been addressed. But definitely, to, uh, to address the macroeconomic stability is, uh, is a key. This is uh, uh, coming from the White Book but, uh, and coming from the FIC, but it's uh, obvious that it is something that all kind of companies and even people in Serbia should, uh, should expect uh, to address the public deficit and the public debt as a first step will definitely lead to a more stable macroeconomic environment and then will lead to what is the final uh, target certainly, this is to reduce the unemployment and to have a better growth in the country. Then having uh, as well uh, addressed the question of the privatization that uh, will be certainly m more detailed by, by the Minister of Economy. Um, the systemic reforms that are of some first importance for the future competitiveness of this country, like education, judicial system, pension fund. And finally, to continue to cut the red, tap, the red tape, are definitely steps into the right direction. I don't want to be too heavy on that. Mm -hmm. We will focus on this implementation. Thank you. And Mr. Prime Minister, how do you respond to comments, conclusions, doubts, uh, whether the government is capable enough to secure stable and uh, predictable business environment? But not kako nije najlakše je uraditi ono što se mora. Kada dođete u situaciju da se nešto mora, moje mišljenje je da ne treba previše gubiti vreme u analizu da li treba ili ne treba, već ovo se jednostavno mora učiniti. Ako ne uradimo sada i ne presečemo stanje, doći ćemo u još težu situaciju. I zato je veoma važno da, veoma je važno da u narednom periodu pošto se donose istorijske odluke, a istorijske se odluke sastoju u tome da mi ove godine po prvi put smo dobili političku odluku da Srbija će početi pregovore o članstvu u Evropsku. Kada će to biti gotovo? To je sada drugo pitanje. Koliko će trajati? Ali nama je u tehničkom smislu počinju skrininzi, već su počeli skrininzi u pogledu 23, 24 i 32. Ti skrinjenzi su dobro ocenjeni od strane Evropske komisije. Srbija je imala jedan veoma težak početak. I pošto se ja, mislim, nalazimo na kraju tog teškog početka, sada moramo da stvorimo sve uslove da živimo kao sam normalan svet. Jedan od preduslova za sve to jeste i ono što ste vi, Ljubice, malo pre rekli, a to je jedno predvidivo poslovno okruženje, odnosno poslovni ambijent. Mi, nažalost, u našoj zemlji nemamo gotovo ništa predvidivo. Pa onda, naravno, da nemamo ni poslovni ambijent predvidiv. Pa, evo, ja ću vam reći, vi se sećate, ova vlada je izabrana 27. jula prošle godine. Čim je izabrana 28. jula, su već počeli da pričaju da će da padne vlada i da će da bude izabrana nova vlada, da će biti izbori i tako dalje. A mi ovde govorimo o 2015. i 2017. godini. Neko bi rekao, pa vi ste 
vi ste previše ambiciozni. Svako neka radi svoj posao. Naš posao je da vršimo vlast, mi smo najviši organ izvršne vlasti i baš zato imamo obavezu da stvorimo predvidljivo poslovni ambijent. A šta to znači? Zakoni, to znači implementacija zakona, to znači potpuno pojednostavljivanje procedura, ukidanje mogućnosti za korupciju. Znači nije samo bitno da li ćete nekoga ukapsiti ili procesuirati i usuditi, to je veoma važno, ali još važnije od toga da se analizira mogućnost za korupciju za svako radno mesto, odnosno političku funkciju koja i šta iz toga proizilazi. I naravno analizirati te posicajne mere koje imaju strani investitori, da li to ostaje, ne ostaje, da li imamo kakav je pristup sada kad je reč o tome, u kakvoj su poziciji domaći investitori, jer investicije nisu samo strane, mi, nažalost, nemamo baš previše sada domaćih investicija, ali nemamo ni stranih. Zato mislim da investicijama treba pristupiti stranim investitorima i domaćim na jedan poseban način. Ali ono što mislim da je najvažnije, Srbija bez dobre pozicije neće nikad biti privlačna. Srbija o kojoj je loša vest u svetu, nikome neće biti privlačna. Pa niko neće uložiti milijon ili milijard milijarde svoje imovine tamo gde ne zna da li će preživjeti do sutrašnjeg dana. A mislim da smo sada izašli iz toj situaciji. Zato sam optimista. Biden mi je rekao kad sam bio kod njega sada poslednji put. Vi ćete biti magnet za investicije ako dobijete datum za početak pregovora sa Evropskom. Evo, ja ga držim za reč, vidjet ćemo sa što će da bude. There is one important thing that both EU and FIC insist on, and this report, Mr. Bekevi urges Serbia to ensure the rule of law and to strengthen the institutions. Moreover, the White Book stresses the importance of adopting bylaws that are necessary for implementation of the particular legislations. Uh, where do you see challenges in that, in that area? The Foreign Investment Council sees um, that these days the implementation is the name of the game of the new laws. And bylaws are necessary because bylaws define the interpretation of the new laws. And this is what the different um, state authorities can abide and that's how they can work together to implement one system. Today what we see is that uh, the lack of bylaws create problems in the implementation and we see that um, contradictory interpretations of one and the same uh, legislation occurs in the, in, in the implementation process. The second uh, challenge what we see is uh, the capacity and the capability of the state administration to deal with the large number of new legislations and uh, with the lack, the absence of uh, these bylaws. Third, um, last but not least, is uh, that the judiciary system is overloaded and in the absence of um, clearly defined interpretation of the laws, they also struggle how to create clarity in disputed uh, cases. So these are the three areas where we see more steps needs to be done. Thank you. Mr. Radulović, can I ask you to join us? Uh, you uh, wrote an op-ed piece recently, and uh, you also stated that a uh, strong legal framework is, uh, is important. You also spoke about the importance of um, domestic resources and uh, described that as a, as a basis, as a foundation for Serbia's recovery. Uh, that article was uh, widely commented. Uh, uh, because of uh, your position um, that uh, foreigners cannot save Serbian, Serbian economy. I think this is a perfect moment to invite you to, to elaborate on that and maybe to clarify your, your position. Oh, well, uh, there is really not too much to clarify. I think it's, it's written in the article. The, the key is uh, our domestic companies. When I say domestic companies, I don't make a distinction whether they are owned by 
um, citizens of Serbia or they are owned by foreign investors. Every business that um, operates in Serbia, employs people in Serbia, pays taxes in Serbia is a domestic business. So uh, we have to build uh, an environment that's good for domestic businesses, that it's good for them to make profit, it's good for them to operate, to hire, to make it simple to do business, domestic businesses. I believe that's by far the best signal to foreign investors to come. Because if a domestic business can make profit, can prosper, then others would come as well. So that, that's the position I think clearly uh, stated in the article. Foreign direct investments are more than welcome. However, we have to take care of our domestic business and that's the key message uh, I'm sending. Now, <clears throat> you mentioned the regulatory environment. It's extremely important. Labor law changes, extremely important for hiring. And uh, important note to make, I believe, is uh, if you make, and this is something that's, that's not uh, easy for Serbian people to understand, but I think we'll win that battle. Uh, when you make firing easier, and, and I'm, I'm deliberately using a harsh word here, that's a pro-hiring measure. Because uh, businesses are not firing people because they are mad. It's because the, uh, either their, their um, revenues are falling, the business climate is not good, or the worker is not good, and they have to change the worker. It is a huge investment in the new worker to make them actually be, be productive in, 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 in that business environment, so nobody is going to fire a good worker ever. I mean, they would shoot themselves in the foot. So if you make an environment that's sort of flexible and allows the business people to, to make uh, good decisions on, on how much to, uh, to, to, uh, how to, how to manage their workforce, that would allow for easy hiring. And that would make them uh, take that step of hiring because the risk of hiring is lower. So that's one example of, of uh, uh, reducing the regulatory burden and making the risk of doing business in Serbia uh, lower, and thus it's a measure that's going to help the growth and help hiring, which is ultimately what the government wants. Thank you. Since you mentioned the, the labor law... Yeah, mogu ja do intervencije samo. Ovaj, neću da kritikujem ministra, hoću da ga podržim. Nismo mi toliko naivni sada baš u Srbiji da mislimo da svi vi strani investitori ste došli ovde da biste spasili srpsku privredu. Došli ste da zaradite. Što je normalno, jer niste vi humanitarne organizacije, nego ste biznismeni. Ovde nije reč o tome šta će da spasi srpsku privredu, nego imamo mi sistem koji će da podstakne domaću Domaću proizvodnju, kad kažem domaću, mislim i na vas koji ovde svi radite. Evo, navešću vam samo jedan primjer. Koliko se Srbija zadužila u poslednjim godinama? Koliko milijardi evra? Koliko smo od toga uzeli za kao investicijone kredite? Je li to uticalo na rast industrijske proizvodnje? Je li to uticalo na rast društvenog proizvoda? Pa gde je tu teorija o javnim radovima? Naravno da je nema nigde, zato što nema javnih radova. Na tenderima pobeđuju strane kompanije koje taj posao preprodaju domaćim po ultimativno niskim cenama. I to nije konkurentnost. To je zloupotreba. A mi ćutimo, ne napravimo sistem protiv toga. Evo pogledajte. Imamo li uspešnu neku građevinsku kompaniju? Zašto? A naše domaće preduzeće ne mogu da učestvuju na tenderima. Nisu dovoljno finansijski sposobne. I šta sad? Mi uzimamo kredite i umesto da naša preduzeća, da time razvijamo domaću proizvodnju, domaću privredu, šta radimo? Izvinite, to nije od interesa za državu. Ja vam pričam otvoreno. Ja sam predsednik vlade Srbije, a ne predsednik vlada vaših zemalja odakle dolazite. Ja moram ovim računa o našim interesima ovde. 
Ovde ste dobrodošli svi i to nema nikakve veze sa vama, ima veze sa nama. Zato što je nama draže da damo bilo kome u inostranstvu da radi bilo koji posao, nego domaćoj firmi koja će to možda uraditi po nižim cenama. Evo, pogledajte, nemoj da misli da se to odnosi samo na zapadne firme. Odnosi se na sve firme koje radi ovde. Dobiju posao i onda upola cene daju podizvođačima našim firmama. Pa gde to ima? To ne postoji nigde. To je čista krađa. Ali zakonski nije u stvari krađa. To je... Krađa je to što su takvi zakoni doneti. Krivi su političari, a ne oni koji to koriste. Hvala vam. Can I, Prime Minister, invite you to, to, to stay on the topic of um, labor law? You chair the Socio-Economic Council. Uh, how realistic, Mr. Dacic, is to expect changes um, of uh, the labor law, having in mind the opposition coming from the, um, the trade unions? And do you think perhaps, maybe that's question number two, that the time has come to rethink the model of the Mislim da model socijalnog dialoga nikad i nije napušten. Mi imamo taj tripartitni socijalno-ekonomski savjet koga čine vlada, poslodavci i sindikati. Naravno, kod sindikata i kod poslodavaca imamo taj problem što kad god zakažem taj savjet, Javi se neka od udruženja, kažu da nisu legitimni ovi što su došli na sastanak. I to, naravno, otupljuje jednu ozbiljnu raspravu koju treba da vodimo o tim sistemskim pitanjima. Mi ćemo upravo malo pre, ovo sam sad sam pitao gospodinu Tanasković, on je predsedavaj, on je na čelu poslodavaca, čuli smo se danas i sa Orbovićem i sindikata, da vidimo, trebalo bi da za dan dva zakažemo sednicu socijalno-ekonomskog savjeta, gde bismo upravo sve ove zakone stavili na dnevni red i preliminarno razgovarali o tome da se nađe rešenje. Mislim da je suština onome što je ministar Odulović malo pre rekao, da se nađe praktično rešenje koje će omogućiti sa jedne strane ne sada smanjivanje prava radnika u smislu da se oni zlostavljaju ili da se bez ikakvog razloga otpuštaju, nama nije cilj da otpuštamo ljude, nego da zapošljavamo ljude. Nego kako da se omogući da to bude fleksibilnije, odnosno da tamo gde ima prostora, da se vrši premeštanje radne snage na neka druga radna mesta. U tome je, mislim, bio naš falični deo strategije posle 2000. godine. Mi smo odlično obavili taj prvi deo strategije, da otpustimo radnike. Samo što taj drugi deo nismo uopšte radili na tome, a to je gde ćemo da ih zaposlimo. I ako mi nemamo jedno i drugo zajedno napravljen sistem, mislim da nećemo ništa uraditi. Tako da ne postoji tema oko koje ne može da se postigne dogovor. Pa znate šta, to bar znam ja iz iskustva. Sada... Finance Minister, Mr. Krstić, has to leave us earlier. I would like to, to, to ask you, uh, uh, Mr. Krstić, one of the expected impacts of the, the, the labor law is to tackle the gray, uh, gray economy. Uh, apart from changing labor regulations, where else um, does the government plan, what else does the government plan to do um, in that respect to ensure better compliance and increase budget revenue? The, um, um, that's right. I think the labor law is, uh, uh, is one component of it. Um, there are uh, others in the domain of uh, labor regulation. How do we ensure that um, uh, the, the employers are stimulated to, uh, um, to essentially report, if I can call it that way, the, uh, the workers at, at the salary level, levels that they actually receive. The 
two other main areas for the budget are uh, excises and uh, and tax evasion. So um, uh, the Prime Minister mentioned, uh, and we have already taken steps over the course of the uh, past month and a half um, uh, in the domain of excises, both um, in the tobacco industry and uh, uh, in the oil derivatives industry, and that, that's clearly where we also have a lot of foreign uh, foreign partners um, uh, working together on that on a common interest. 